Heavenly Father is greatly blessing us. And we truly are trailblazers of truth. Once again, trailblazers of truth. And the Heavenly Father has positioned this ministry to bring forth worldwide change. Amen. So as I challenge you this morning, I want to challenge you with this question. What if people believed education was the answer? Amen. In other words, the more educated you are, the more victory you will have. If this was true, the body of Christ would not shun education, but they would get as much education as they could, fill themselves up with this education, because then there would be a direct relationship There would be a direct relationship between education and overcoming. Amen. 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 This morning, you can write this in red. We're going to prove that there is a direct relationship. There is a direct relationship that the knowledge of Yahweh. will cause you to overcome anything. Yes, that's true. Now listen. Ali, and it's very, very important, amen, in the name of Yahshua. Today we're going to teach that deliverance comes through education. Amen. Everyone say deliverance. Deliverance. Comes through education. Comes through education. Now, this being true, Holland, we have to debunk some fables and myths within the body of Christ that people have taken out of context in order to keep people dumb. There's a spirit within the body of Christ out to numb and dumb the body. What happens within the body of Christ is that people believe if they keep doing something over and over again, that the Heavenly Father is going to equate it with their word. In other words, because they have a tradition that they keep saying and walking in, they believe that if they keep doing this tradition, that tradition within itself, the Heavenly Father will ordain and call truth. But that is contrary to Scripture. This being true, if someone is in bondage, education can get you out. Yes. Amen. Education can get you out of bondage. Are you with me, saints? This being true, then the body of Christ, Hallelujah, they would have a duty. They would have a duty, Hallelujah. To educate the body, because in so doing, in the name of Yahshua, there would be victory. Today's message is the Ark Yahweh. The Ark Yahweh. That's D A apostrophe A T H. The Ark Yahweh subtitle Hallelujah Deliverance through Education. Amen. Hallelujah. Write this side by side. Listen, to this saints. Hallelujah. And it's very important in the name of Yahshua for us, Hallelujah, to receive the fullness of what Christ Yahshua has for us. Amen. Amen. Because what I need you to ascertain and what I need you to become a part of today is this. As you acquire right knowledge, you acquire strength. Amen. As you acquire epigenosis, precise, Yali knowledge, you have the power to overcome. Amen. Amen. Now, what the Word teaches, what I would like to uh, break down is four keys. We don't have the time to do it today. Four keys. The, the, the Word teaches that there are four keys hallelujah, that brings deliverance. Amen. Are you with me, saints? Hallelujah. Maybe I'll do a little bit. Amen. Minister Princess, underneath that, everything else you can write. Four keys. Yes. You're worthy, Father. Yeah. Four keys. Amen. Deliverance comes through one of four keys. Are you with me, saints? Amen. Everyone say, deliverance comes, deliverance comes through 
one of four keys. Through one of four keys. Hallelujah. And, and once again, hallelujah, these four keys, hallelujah, is what we stand on, hallelujah, in order to be delivered or set free, hallelujah, from anything that ails us. Are you with me, saints? Amen. Amen. This being true, hallelujah, you have four means. <laughs> you with me? You have four means, hallelujah, to get from, from under whatever is trying to overtake you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The first key, four keys, hallelujah, that bring, one of four of these keys bring deliverance. Everyone say one. 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 Of all four of these keys bring deliverance. Of all four of these keys bring deliverance. Amen. Are you with me, saints? Father, I want to magnify you. And saints, once again, this is very important because when we begin to understand that education can free you, and education can make you mighty, and education can set you free, then you have a responsibility to be educated in Christ. Amen. Then you have a responsibility to, to take that. The first key, Holly, what we know, Holly, is love. Amen? Are you with me? Love. Amen? I'm just going to, you can write this beside it. One love. Holly, in Psalms 91.14, you can write Psalms 91.14. Holly, it says love brings deliverance. In Psalm 6, 4, once again, love brings deliverance. Say, turn, O Yahweh, and deliver me. Save me because of your loving kindness. Hallelujah. And in Psalms 109, 21, again, it shows that love brings deliverance. Hallelujah. The second one is Psalm 6, 4. Are you with me? Now, hallelujah. We also know, hallelujah. Everyone say, love brings deliverance. Love brings deliverance. Two, the name brings deliverance. The name brings deliverance. Hallelujah. Romans 10, 13. Amen. Hallelujah. And Yael 2, 32. Amen. Whosoever calls on the name of Yahweh shall be saved. Amen. Amen. So we understand once again that love brings deliverance. Hallelujah. Because Yahweh loves us. Hallelujah. Because you love him. Hallelujah. Deliverance will come in the name of Yahshua. We also know that deliverance comes through the name. Are you with me, saints? Hallelujah. We also know that deliverance comes. Hallelujah. Three. Through the anointing. Yes, Yah, 1027. For the it's the anointing that breaks the yoke. Amen. I need everybody with me. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Because once again, in the name of Yahshua, Hallelujah. And of course, the fourth one is education. Amen. Amen. Or precise knowledge. Amen. Amen. Brings deliverance. This being true, if any of us are in, under any form of bondage, Today, it's time for either you to get an anointing, or use the name, Amen. or love Yahweh more, or get educated. Mm -hmm. wow. Wow, man. Oh, Within each of these keys, it brings a new breakthrough in Christ. Amen. A new strength in Christ. Amen. What the body of Christ must do, the body of Christ must take responsibility of overcoming. What do I mean by take responsibility of overcoming? The world is watching to see if you're going to overcome. Amen. The world is watching to see, I mean, if you're going to be that answer prayer. The world is watching to see. And once again, the word of Yahweh says, the eyes of Yahweh go to and fro the earth looking for someone, looking for anyone that he might show himself strong through. So Yahweh's looking for candidates to use someone in order to make them an example of the name Yahshua so the rest of the world can follow him and take heed to him. Are you with me, saints? Now, where the Heavenly Father is taking us, and I, I, I need you, to, I need you to, to grasp this and become one with you. Amen. Educate yourself. Yes. Educate yourself in the name of Yahshua. And what I mean by educate yourself, understand that whatever Yahshua Christos has given you, he has given unto you to prosper you, to make you mighty, to make you strong, to make you great. That's right. But for too long, Hallelujah, we have not associated education with breakthrough. Amen. So if you don't have a breakthrough, you're not educated. The Bible says, by his stripes from hill. Now if I'm educated by this, that means when I get sick, I mean, the only thing I've got to meditate on, hallelujah, is that he was not whooped or beaten in vain. Amen. 
Listen to this, saints. It's amazing how we, how we often forget. Everyone who has ever received the healing got sick again. Yes. I'm going to say it again. Every person who has ever gotten a healing got sick again. Amen. But when you get sick again, you don't blame Yahweh that you got sick again. Amen. You just know it's time, hallelujah, to believe yes. for a miracle again. Amen. Just like everybody who is saved falls. Yes. A righteous man falls seven times but arises again. But sometimes we fall and we get mad at the Heavenly Father. Why did you allow me to fall? That's almost like getting mad with him saying, why am I getting a cold again? Why do I have the flu again? In other words, when you're educated in the name of Yahshua through Yah, whatever you're facing, on, man, you begin to apply the precise knowledge of education that the Father has entrusted you with. Amen. Let's look at verse 9. Verse 9 in Proverbs 11 9 says, A hypocrite with his mouth destroys his neighbor. But through knowledge the just is what? Delivered. 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 If you need deliverance, you need some knowledge. Mm. Amen. Amen. If you need some deliverance, you need some knowledge. Once you begin to understand this in the name of Yahshua, you begin to understand, amen, once again the word says, we're not ignorant of Satan's devices, amen. We begin to understand that we have a responsibility, amen, to equip ourselves, hallelujah, with the knowledge of Elohim. Once again it says, a hypocrite with his mouth, hallelujah, he destroys his neighbor, but through knowledge, hallelujah, but through knowledge, the just, amen, that word knowledge there is the Hebrew word, the arth. The arth, hallelujah, is a very unique word in Hebrew. Hallelujah. This word means knowledge. Hallelujah. <coughs> Perception. <coughs> Skill. Discernment. Understanding. <coughs> wisdom. Hallelujah. Now it's very important, hallelujah, we're going to finish the finance. You're going to remain there, Minister Princess. Everyone say, don't harm. Don't harm. Don't harm. I mean, come on, say it like you mean it, dog. Uh, now, why am I saying this? Because, saints, we don't like to take responsibility. You see, education forces you to take responsibility. Because when you are in a, in, when you are in an environment of education, you'll be held accountable for not being educated at all. One thing you can't do with Christ. You with me, Damaris? One thing you can't do with Christ, you can't blame your teacher for you not learning. Yeah. <laughs> what you can't do with Yahweh, you can't say, well, my professor didn't break it down the right way. He didn't explain it to me the right way. Amen. Are you with me, saints? Amen. So the thing is, Hallelujah, in Yahweh's class, if you don't understand, there's no one to blame but you. You can't even blame the devil because the devil cannot be in his presence. Amen. Is it the way? I mean, because his, his presence and his, his anointing is too great. I mean, but when we look at this Hebrew word, the R, I mean, the primary root of this word, it means, Holly, whenever you see it in scripture, it denotes the knowledge of Yahweh. I mean, Holly, once again, and all throughout, Holly, the book of Proverbs, Holly, it says the fear of Yahweh is the beginning of knowledge. The fear of Yahweh is the beginning of the R. Are you with me, saints? I mean, we're going to go there in a moment. I mean, but the R is in... Intimate expression, I mean, which paves the way for moral and ethical knowledge. I mean, once again, wherever you see the ark in scripture, it's going to denote, hallelujah, the knowledge of Yahweh. I mean, in other words, when you ascertain and when you become a part of Yahweh's knowledge, you become a part of all power. I mean, because now Yahweh is giving you access to everything he has access to. Now, what I need you to hold on to and what I need you to grasp, hallelujah, with your spiritual mentality, amen, and with your mental mind, is that knowledge, the ark, brings deliverance. Amen. Are you with me, saints? Once again, the ark brings deliverance. Amen? It brings hallelujah, deliverance. Amen? And once we begin to understand in the name of Yahshua, Hallelujah, that it brings deliverance. We have a greater confidence. Amen. The ark through scripture, it says, it states, 
Hallelujah. That in walking the ways of Yahweh, in walking in the ways of Yahweh, I want this written down. In walking in the ways of Yahweh, is there a listen? One acquires the knowledge of Yahweh. So the ark, what it shows forth, it shows forth communion. Mm -hmm. As Yahweh is conversing with you. Is everybody with me? Amen. Now once we begin to understand this, we have a better understanding, hallelujah, of the scripture that says, hallelujah, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of Yahweh. Amen. Because what we're learning now is that when Yahweh speaks to you, whenever he speaks to you, even if he tells you he loves you, he's giving you knowledge. Amen. Amen. If Yahweh tells you you're great, he's giving you knowledge. Amen. Amen. If Yahweh tells you you're healed, he's giving you knowledge. Amen. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the Logos, hearing the, the rhema of Yahweh. Amen. Faith comes by hearing and hearing his word. Whenever he speaks, he's giving you the ark. Amen. And once again, the ark, what it shows and it denotes, it shows and denotes relationship. Amen. Listen to this. Amen. This is what's very key about the, the ark, and I want you to hold this. Amen. Put this in quotes, Mr. Princess. To experience wisdom is to experience Yahweh. Amen. Some of you missed that. Amen. To experience wisdom is to experience Yahweh. In other words, in the name of Yahshua, I need some of you to understand right now. You can get delivered through dark. You can get set free, free through knowledge. You can get set free in the name of Yahshua by obeying the prescription, by obeying the word, by obeying the testament that he gave you in the name of Yahshua. You don't need, some of you not going to like this, you don't need to get into a prayer line. You don't need a special prayer. Amen. I mean, you don't need a, a, a special prayer to go forth. If you would just walk in the one word he gave you, I mean, and make that one word a reality, that one word would deliver you. That one word would strengthen you. That one word would make you great. That one word would make you mighty. Amen. Listen, the heart, deliverance through education. Education in Christ is, 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 is it brings breakthroughs. I mean, I mean, listen to this. If this is true, that education brings deliverance, mm -hmm. then each parent, you should be held accountable. Where it says, train up a child in the way they ought to go. Uh, each parent, you should become accountable to educating your child how to overcome. Each person, I mean. So in other words, education brings, brings a breakthrough. I mean, Yahweh just doesn't teach you his name so you'll know his name. Amen. I mean, Yahweh teaches you his name so you have the fullness of the knowledge and the education to overcome each and every lie. Amen. Amen. Are you with me, saints? Now, in the book of Genesis, I want you to write this. Hold on. Amen. Are you with me? Come on, saints. This, this is some powerful teaching. Amen. The book of Genesis teaches us that knowledge is absent from human nature. Oh, some of you missed it. The book of Genesis teaches us that knowledge is absent from human nature. So, Holly, you're just not born with knowledge. I mean, you're not with me. I mean, you're not just born with knowledge. I mean, I'm tired of people acting like when they ask Christ into their life, when they ask Jesus to come into their life, just in one split second, he gave them all understanding of the Bible. Are you, you with me? I mean, you see, I mean, it's not, is anybody with me? It's not, it, it, it's not human nature, I mean, to, to, to be educated. Amen. In other words, hallelujah, are you with me, saints? Hallelujah. It means that knowledge is absent from human nature, and because knowledge is absent from human nature, hallelujah, it must be put into human nature. Amen. Hallelujah. Genesis 2 9, are you with me? Yes. And out of the ground made Yahweh, wherever you see capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, made Yahweh Elohim to grow every tree that is pleasant in the sight and good for food. And the tree of life also in the midst of the garden. And the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Once again, the ark. I mean, that's knowledge, the ark. Listen, saints, I need you to, to, to listen to this. The sin was that man wanted knowledge outside of Yahweh. Yes, yes. Because when Adam 
was put in the garden, Adam already knew Yahweh. Amen. And because Adam already knew Yahweh, amen, Adam should have went to Yahweh, and the word says, hallelujah, that he put Adam into the garden to keep. That is the Hebrew word shamar. It means to guard and protect. Amen. Now, if he was put into the garden to guard and protect, immediately when that serpent came up and tried to usurp his authority, some of y'all not with me, to usurp his authority against what Yahweh entrusted into Adam. You see, Adam's sin was he listened to he listened to a snake. He put a snake before the father. I mean, he, he put the word of a stranger. Y'all not with me. I mean, I, I, you see, when Adam was created, he didn't wake up and say, who created me? I mean, Yahweh created him and spoke to him. I mean, Yahweh formed him, and after Yahweh formed him, Yahweh placed him in the garden. I need somebody with me in the name of Yahshua. And this being true, I mean, Adam had a relationship, personal relationship with Yahweh. Why is Adam listening to this serpent? In the serpent, the first thing the serpent says to him, did Elohim say? I mean, question Wherefore, for those of you who love to study the scripture, we understand in this case that Christ was a second born and not a first born. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Christ was a second born the same way that Jacob was a second born. Amen. That's what come. He's called what? Also the son of Adam, also known in the book of Romans chapter 5 as the second Adam. Amen. Because the first Adam fell. Amen. But the second Adam, when Christ comes into your life, he gives you another chance. He gives you another opportunity. Because the first you knew, the first you wasn't good. The first you was born in birth and sin. But after that, he gave you some knowledge. He gave you some knowledge. For Yah so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. How can you believe in something you don't know about? Amen. I mean, what for was written in Romans chapter 10. I mean, how, how should they call on him they've never heard of unless a preacher is sent? I mean, why is the preacher sent? The preacher is sent to caress them, to proclaim, to hurl the word of truth. I mean, because once again, you have an opportunity to be educated because there is deliverance in education. Parents, I need you listening. Because some of you, you never take an opportunity to educate your child. You leave it up to the teacher. Yes. And whenever parents leave it solely up to the teacher to educate their child, when the parent feels as if their child is not educated, the first person they blame is the teacher. But when you are the true educator of your child, you will never blame a teacher for what your child doesn't know. I mean, when you love your child, if your child is lacking anything, you begin to truly your child. We got some children who feel unloved. There's something wrong when you expect the child teacher to love your child the way mommy should love, the way daddy should love. That's what God would give you a Father, you are worthy to be thanked, and you are worthy to be praised. This being true, the body of Christ, they're missing it when it comes to education. I'm going to say it again. The body of Christ, they're missing it when it comes to education. You say the name Yahweh, like what? Who's teaching you that foolishness? Who's teaching you that garbage? When you say the name Yahshua, people say, what? What is that? I never heard that name before. I mean, and they come back and say, what well, we call him Jesus. I mean, it's like the whole body of Christ, they feel threatened by education. Wow. I mean, and, and for some reason, they fail to realize that education is anointed. I mean, how be it when he comes, the spirit of truth, he shall lead and guide you into all truth. I'm tired of church folks acting like they met all truth and they dance in all truth. How can you say you met all truth when you're still flowing in life? Oh, Hallelujah, Father, you are worthy. Amen. Are you with me, saints? Once again, Genesis 2 9. Amen. It teaches us how that knowledge is absent from human nature. Because knowledge is absent from human nature. Holly, you ready? You have to make an effort. Everyone say, make an effort. Make an effort. Say it again. You have to make an effort. Make an effort. You got to make an effort, Hallelujah, to put, Hallelujah, knowledge in you. 
Amen. Amen. You've got to make a great and mighty effort. Amen. Amen. Holy Father, you are worthy. Holly, let's turn back to Proverbs chapter 11 very speedily. Are you with me, saints? Amen. Amen. So once again, the art, amen, knowledge, skill, skill, perception, discernment, understanding, wisdom, intimate expression that paves the way for moral and ethical knowledge, amen. Hallelujah. Uh, the art in the word denotes the knowledge of Yahweh, amen. All throughout the, the word, it, it denotes, hallelujah, you, you with me? It denotes the beginning of your relationship with him. Amen. Hallelujah. What we have done, hallelujah, y'all not with me, in church, hallelujah, you, you with me? We like to go with the other keys. I mean, we like to go with the key of the name. I mean, you got some people, everything's happening. They, 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 some of them don't even need to use the name. They just whatever happens, the blood. The blood of Jesus. You know, the blood of Jesus. That's all you hear, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Come on, saints. Come on, I need y'all with me. I mean, you, you have uneducated saints who will actually attempt to put the blood of Jesus on a demon. I plead the blood of Jesus. Y'all not with us. Amen. I plead the blood of Jesus. The blood was never meant for demons. He didn't shed his blood for demons. I know I'm teaching. He didn't shed his blood for demons. His blood was shed for the remission of sins. Amen. Y'all not with me, amen. I just want you to know some hocus pocus Christianity going on. In the name. You know, something goes on, just plead the blood. 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 I mean, you need to stop throwing his precious blood where it doesn't belong. Amen. You with me? Then the other thing is, I need you with me. Holly, because they, they use the blood the same with the name. They just want to come up in everything. I mean, I'm getting the F in school. I bind it up. You can't bind up an F. <laughs> such thing as, ed as education without you with me? Yes. Self-responsibility. Yes. 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 There's no such thing as education without self-responsibility. I mean, I'm not going to let you come here to this church every Monday, every Wednesday, every Shabbat, and every Sunday and tell me how you didn't learn nothing. I'm going to be bold enough and tell you, you're done. destroys his name, but through the ark shall the just hallelujah be delivered. The Hebrew word for delivered here is kalatz. Kalatz. C-H-A-L-A-T-S. Amen. It means to remove. It means to take out. It also means to equip for war. It means to arm for war. It means to rescue and to be rescued. Are you with me, saints? In other words, hallelujah, it also means to be saved and be delivered. Amen. Through knowledge, Yahweh draws you out. 
Through knowledge, Yahweh rescues you. Through knowledge, Yahweh equips you. Through knowledge, Yahweh equips you for war. Through knowledge, hallelujah, he saves you. Through knowledge, he rescues you. Dar. But once again, Dar, hallelujah, as we see it in Hebrew, hallelujah, denotes personal relationship. When I take my daughters to school, I always tell them, stay alert, stay alive. We learn that in the military. Stay alert, stay alive. You know, stay alert, stay alive. Amen. Holly, so, uh, you know, for a while, my daughter Jessica Ann was forgetting the homework. And I always tell my wife, before we blame the children, we have to first blame, our, blame ourselves. Right. I said, we have to teach. It's like teaching a, 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 a safety course. Amen. And when you work in an endangered, a, a very uh, dangerous environment, you have to constantly inform yourself of the safeties or yeah. the safety hazard. So I always tell Timmy, Chris, and Jess, Holly, before you leave school, go for your checklist. Do I have all my books? Do I have all my homework? Amen. Hallelujah. Then it's going to be my job to ask you, do you have all your books? Do you have all your homework? Are you sure? Amen. Are you with me? So when we get in the car, I do this checklist in the name of Yahshua. Amen. I need you with me. I do a checklist and I say, Heavenly Father, I bind up all car accidents. Father, I thank and pray for my children that they are kept in your name. Amen. That they are safe in your name. Amen. Father's written, there shall no evil before the just. Father, right now, and I say to you, head of Otisa, my family will suffer no death through a car for them, even down to the third generation. Father, I confess not even my grandchildren or my great-grandchildren will die in the car accident. Father, I'm standing on the Lord because you keep me in your covenant name. You see, we do personal relationship. Yes, Father, I thank you for the name of Yahshua. Father, I thank you for the name of Yahshua. Father, I thank you for the name of Yahshua. Father, I thank you for the name of Yahshua. Father, I thank you for the name of Yahshua. Father, I thank you for the name of Yahshua. Father, I thank you for the name of Yahshua. Father, I thank you for the name of Yahshua. Father, I thank you for the name of Yahshua. Father, I thank you for the name of Yahshua. Father, I thank you for the name of Yahshua. Father, I thank you for the name of Yahshua. Father, I thank you for the name of Yahshua. Father, I thank you for the name of Yahshua. Father, I thank you for the name of the knowledge of Yahweh. There's power in that knowledge. There is strength in that knowledge. Amen. Are you with me, saints? Amen. Father, you are worthy. Hoshea 6. My goodness. Hallelujah. Saints, I, Yahweh, he told me, I believe he told me Monday. He said, since you started the ministry, there are hundreds of thousands speaking my name that you know not of. Yahweh said they can be traced back to you. Yahweh said that they're planting seeds in the name of Hashem. Knowledge empowers you. Amen. I believe it was Frederick Douglass who said it's easier to raise a new, new, new children how to repair broken men. I mean, you have a lot of broken people in church. But because they're so broke, they're stuck on how they, they're stuck on where they are, I mean, but they fail to realize, I mean, the reason why there's a teaching anointing within the body of Christ. Because if you will adhere to the teaching, if you will submit to the teaching, amen, you'll be made great and prosperous. Are you with me, saints? I need y'all with me. Ho she. You're worthy, Father Yah. Chapter 6. 6 6. It says, are you with me? For I desire mercy and not sacrifice. I mean, what did Yahweh say he desired? Mercy. And not sacrifice. Amen. And the knowledge of Elohim more than burnt offerings. Amen. Once again, the knowledge of Elohim is the heart. Amen. And the knowledge of Elohim more than burnt offerings. Amen. In other words, Yahweh says, Amen. Uh, 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 sacrificing that goat, sacrificing that bull is not going to do it. You, you with me, amen? Holly, but it's that, it's that the heart you, you receive from Yahweh and that you begin to apply to your life, amen? It's that the heart you receive from Yahweh and you begin to walk in that, amen? When, when you receive that and you begin to walk in it, in the name of Yahshua, you walk in the greatness and the might of Yah. Are you with me, saints? Holly, let's look at Hoshea 6.1. Hoshea 6 1, are you with me, Father? You are worthy to be thanked and praised. And saints, once again, it's very important in the name of Yahshua for us to understand. I mean, it says, Come and let us return unto Yahweh. Amen. For he, have, he is torn, for he hath torn, and he will heal. Hallelujah. He will heal us. He is smitten, and he will bind us together. Amen. So we understand in the name of Yahshua that Yahweh within himself, Hallelujah, he. he 
He brings deliverance. It says, after two days, he will revive us. And in the third day, he will raise us up. Raise us up. Right? And we shall live in his sight. I mean, verse 3 says, then shall we know. If we follow on to know Yahweh, his going forth is prepared as the morning. And he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and former rains in the earth. Oh, she in 4, 6. Mm. Father, I magnify. It says, my people are destroyed. Destroyed for what? A lack of what? No. No. So what it is, now we have a direct relationship, Holly, of you getting beat up. Mm. You being used. Mm. You being abused. Because what you don't know. And the New Testament is put like this. To him who has, more shall be given. And to him who has not, even a little you have will be taken away from you. I mean, that's what comes out of here. You've got to get the knowledge. You've got to get the door off of Yahweh. And you begin to apply it in your life. What I need you to ask yourself is this question right now. What has Yahweh educated you in that you're not moving on? Every time he gives you information, you're supposed to invest in that information. Because when you invest in it, it brings... A return. Amen. It brings a return in the name of Yahshua. I'm looking on a return of everything Yahweh promised me. I mean, so while I was praying and studying last night, I mean, I told Yahweh, I mean, I'm not pleased with my walk. I'm not pleased with my walk. I mean, and, 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 and Yahweh says, Holly, I'm so happy that you're not pleased with you. Because you're not pleased with you, I mean, you're going to search out something new. I mean, because you're not pleased with you, I mean, you know only the all and the finish can make you. It's amazing, honey, when you tell God what you want more of him, what does he do? He sits you down. I mean, and once again, as Christians, we want the easy way out. What's the easy way out? Put some oil on it. Uh, give me a prophecy. Just give me a prophecy. A real one. We want a quick fix. I mean, like a remote control. Give me, put some oil on my head. I mean, I want you to give me something through prayer that's not going to take me hours. I, I want you to give me through a, through prayer that is not going to take good habits to become. I want you to give me through prayer what is not going to take diligence. I want you to give me through prayer what's not going to take through study. I want you to give me a quick fix. Give me a real quick high. Oh, that's what comes to some people that come to worship. I need a quick high. I need I need to come so I can feel it. And if I feel good, then I can tell everybody else I feel good. Amen. What good is it feeling good when that high comes down? Amen. And everybody who ever got high, you know, after you come down, you're in the same state, you're in the same position. Uh, before you put that blood in your mouth, you come back down. The same way you went up, you come back down into the same filth, into the same destruction. This is saying something, let me ask you. Once again, there's a direct relationship. But here, Hallelujah, in Hoshea 4 6, Yahweh begins to show that if you don't have knowledge, you'll be destroyed. Right. Y'all know where I am. Now, if you truly believe that, yes. then you would educate yourself. And educate those around you. Amen. Amen. Because a lack of knowledge. Uh, my people are destroyed for a lack of the earth. Mm. My people are destroyed. Honey, and because the priest has rejected the earth, I rejected the. Amen. So what we begin to see over and over again. Honey, that if you push away the knowledge of Yahweh. I mean, you're left to your own devices. Once again, my people are destroyed. Are you with me, saints? My people are destroyed. Uh, destroyed, Holly, is the Hebrew word Dama. Dama. D-A-M-A. Say this is very important, Holly, because I, I, I want to move so we can go up against the stereotypes. What's the stereotypes? Amen. The stereotypes, Holly, is when people use the scripture, knowledge puffs up. Oh, yeah. Beloved. Yeah. Oh, you, 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 you're not with me. Hold on, see. Are you with me? Amen. So, 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 we. we we, we, we have to come against the other scripture. I mean, we're going to get there. Holly, it says, tongues shall fail. Mm. I mean, it says, prophecy shall fail. Yeah. Uh, and it says, knowledge shall cease. Holly, I want to show you that people are using it out of context. Yeah. I mean, they're using it out of context because it's two separate Greek words. One is gnosis, the other is epigenosis. I mean, nowhere in scripture will you know epigenosis will ever cease. I mean, nowhere in scripture will you ever see that epigenosis will puff you up. I'm tired of people acting like the name of Yahweh puffs you up or the name of Yahshua puffs you up. That doesn't puff you up. It educates you. I mean, it brings you closer to who he is in the name of Yahshua. The only people who are offended are people who are stuck in stupidity. I mean, when truth comes along, it pushes you.
you put a da'ar from Yahweh. I mean, the, the da'ar from Yahweh, listen, dama, dama means to cease. Da, uh, dama means to cut off. It means to destroy. It means to perish. You listening? Dama means, hallelujah, to be undone. I, I need somebody with me in the name of Yahshua. Amen. Dama means, hallelujah, to, to cut off the issue. So in other words, if, if, if I'm not getting to heart, that means I'm going to die. I mean, I, I, I cannot allow myself to die. I mean, I can't allow myself to give up. I can't allow myself to give in to Satan. I will not give in to Satan. Amen. Amen. I am tired of foolish Christians talking about how the devil knows the Bible. The devil does not know the Bible. You got some Christians who like the devil knows just so much about you. If the devil knows so much about you, why wasn't he in Bethlehem waiting for baby Jesus? He couldn't even tell a baby. A baby. A baby. I mean, it's all over the Bible. I mean, everywhere. Now, now, if the devil's so powerful, why did he have his demons with Herod in the wise men? How come? Why did he just put a trail? Why did he just follow the wise men? Because wise men, they won't follow the star. I mean, if he was smart enough just to follow the wise men, how come the devil didn't see the star that the wise men saw? How come the devil couldn't come down and see the star pointing out the baby Jesus and just kill him? Couldn't do it. He doesn't know his Bible. He doesn't know his scripture. He hates the God of Yahweh. Reject, despise, refuse. They have rejected the earth. You with me? Yeah. It means you have pushed it to the side. Some of us, we're pushing away our deliverance. <sighs> Holly, you know, Holly, yeah, yeah. Saints, I'll listen to anybody, you know. So um, I'm just keeping it real, you know. I will, Holly, because, you know, the, you know, the older I get, you know, when you get older, you can't do what you could do when you're young. So you got to shut up and listen. Um, so, you know, a person was telling me how they were into all different types of things. Okay, all right. So they'd be going, they, 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 they said, do you know Buddha? I'm like, yeah, I know Buddha. It's like, when I pray to Buddha, you know I'm not praying to the statue. I was like, yes, I, I know that. Because what a lot of people fail to realize is that when the Bible speaks about idolatry, I'm in, hallelujah. And when it speaks about Hollywood worshiping idols, people never worship the idol. They worship the spirit behind it. Mm -hmm. So then she began asking, what do you think about Buddha? I said, well, I just go by the facts. And the facts is this. He couldn't be so enlightened if he died eating poisonous pork. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who should at least have known if he was so enlightened? Uh, no, you eat that dude, you will die. <laughs> so I can't exalt somebody who couldn't discern mm. they eat the poison for them. <laughs> you can't compare that to my Woo! You can't compare that to my scripture to say okay. they will take a poison and it will not destroy you. You can't compare it. So there's no comparison between Buddha and Lord. Whoa! 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 That's not Never read about Buddha. 
from eating poisonous pork. At least if you're a Buddhist, you shouldn't eat pork. Stay from that, because it killed your leaf. <laughs> Don't give me, you know, y'all know Buddha doesn't have an English name, right? Yeah. right. Buddha doesn't have an English name. Some of y'all don't even know what language Buddha is. But if I say Yahweh, you're like, who that? I say Yasha, you say, who that? I mean, I, I need you with me. But for Buddha, oh, no, we're not going to talk about Muhammad. I mean, Muhammad, he don't have no name changes either. Nor does Tariq, Mustafa, Pookie. <laughs> Shaniqua, <laughs> all these things are transgendering. And black folks do this make up But how enlightened could Buddha have been if he died from eating poisonous pork? Yeah. Is, there, is somebody with me? I mean, I, now this being true, I mean, I, you know, I gotta dig deep. And I'm like, no, but the knowledge of y'all. Proverbs 1 7 says, The fear of Yahweh. Fear is Yahweh. Yahweh. Y I R apostrophe H. Yahweh. The awesomeness of Yahweh. The reverence of Yahweh. The reverence of Yahweh is the beginning, or sheet, of the earth. But fools despise. Wisdom and instruction. I always tell my wife, I don't, I don't are y'all with me? I always tell my wife, whatever our children, whatever they need, we have to be ready to give. If, 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 if your child, saints, this is the time. This is, this is the time to remove your child's insecurity. If your child has an insecurity, Holly, with math, this is the time to fix it. Get a tutor. Get a tutor. Don't, don't you tell your child, well, the family's not good in math. No, no. In this church, anybody can be educated. I don't care your background. I don't care what you did before you got here. The Da'arf of Yahweh. Is you with me? I mean, the Da'arf of Yahweh, it comes in and educates you. I mean, education in Christ brings breakthroughs. Education in life brings deliverance. Then shalt thou understand the fear of Yahweh and find knowledge of Elohim. Amen. Hallelujah. How do you find knowledge, the heart of Elohim? You with me, saints? Verse 4. If you seek her as silver and search for her as hid treasures. Amen? When you do these things, you get the knowledge of Elohim. Verse 6 says, Yahweh giveth wisdom. Amen? Giveth this nation. You don't have to write it down. Amen? It means to give. Yahweh giveth wisdom. Amen? Wisdom is... Kakma, Kakma, C H A K. I'm so excited about what is happening. And if, if you want to know where, where our ministry is going, look at those who are seven and younger. Yes. They got a different mentality. They, I mean, Minister Luan's sons challenge him and sing, dance. I mean, the, the, the youth they have a they have a they have a they have a totally different outlook. While some of y'all struggling. Uh, the, the little kids, they know. Amen. They know we're we, we gonna, we gonna reap the promise. Yes. Uh, we gonna, we, we, we're gonna reap, y'all not with me. We're gonna reap everything they're praying in. I mean, they might not, they might not live all right at first. Come on, if anybody know church kids. Come on, I got a family full of church kids. But that's what you know, hallelujah. But the, the prayers that went on before the ministry of the moment. I mean, the prayers that went on. We, y'all not with me, talking about me. Yahweh Nathan, he gives his wisdom. Amen. Wisdom is skill. Hallelujah. It's prudence. And wisdom in religious, hallelujah, and ethical matters. Hallelujah. Out of his mouth comes the art. Amen. Out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. Amen. Amen. Understanding is a cool word. Taboo. 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 T A B U W M. Amen. Taboo. Taboon is understanding, intelligence, the act of understanding. Amen. Listen to what this is. Taboon. Oh, this is for another time. Y'all with me? Taboon is a teacher personified. A teacher personified. Amen. The, the personification of teaching. 
I mean, very, very powerful. Amen. So in other words, the, the ark of Yahweh always comes in to teach you. So the ark in itself denotes relationship between teacher and pupil. Hold on, see. Some of y'all not with me. Amen. Hallelujah. And once again, hallelujah, it shows forth, hallelujah, that goodness and, 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 and that might of Yah. Hallelujah. As we stand, amen. As, 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 as Yahweh brings forth his goodness. Now I just want to just read a few things to you. Are uh, with me? Amen. In Psalms 94 10, amen, it says, Hallelujah, that Yahweh teaches man how to are. Hallelujah. You with me? In Psalms 119 66, it says, Teach me judgment and the ark and knowledge. Proverbs 1 22 says, Who hates the ark? In Proverbs 10 14, it says, Wise men lay up knowledge. Amen. In Proverbs 11 9, it says, Hallelujah, but through knowledge shall the just be delivered. Hallelujah. In Proverbs 12 1, it says, Whosoever loves instructions loves knowledge. Amen. In Proverbs 15 2, it says, the tongue of the wise uses knowledge. Amen. In Proverbs 15, 7, it says, The lips of the wise, hallelujah, they disperse knowledge. In Proverbs 15, 14, it says, The heart of him that has understanding seeks knowledge. In Proverbs 18, 15, hallelujah, the heart of the prudent giveth knowledge. Hallelujah. And the ear of the wise seek knowledge. In Proverbs 22, 12, it says, hallelujah, The eyes of Yahweh preserve knowledge. In Proverbs 22, 17, it says, Bow down your ear and apply your heart to knowledge. Amen. Amen. So over and over again, uh, all throughout scripture, it shows forth the power of the word the ark. Amen. Amen. In Proverbs 24, 4 and 5, it says, And by knowledge the ark shall thy chambers be full with all precious and pleasant riches. A wise man is strong, yea, a man of knowledge increases his strength. If this is true, you need to get some more the ark. Amen. 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 Are you with me, saints? Amen. And getting this the ark, we walk in the fullness and the greatness of Yah. Amen. Now, this being true, let's debunk the lies of what we've been taught that knowledge pops up. Amen. Are you with me? 1 Corinthians 8 1. Why don't you there say amen? Come on, saints, very speedily. It says, Now, as touching things offered unto idols, we know that we all have knowledge. Amen. We all have knowledge. We all have knowledge of the Greek word gnosis. G-N-O-S-I-S, gnosis. Gnosis is knowledge, comma, general intelligence, and understanding. And general knowledge of the Christian faith. So if you got gnosis, you're just general. You with me? I need you with me. If you're with me, say amen. amen. Come on. Amen. It says... Knowledge puffs up. When you see knowledge puffs up, it's gnosis. Amen. General knowledge, general intelligence, general understanding puffs up. Are you with me, saints? Amen. I need you with me. Amen. But love edifies. Because right now, if you're not going to take responsibility for yourself, at least take responsibility for your children. Amen. And some of us, we misinformed our children. That's why they walk in the wrong thing. But we have a lot of people, the reason that we're walking in hardship is because we pushed away the door of Yahweh. He gave you the knowledge how to overcome. He gave you the, the knowledge how to be victorious. He gave you the knowledge how to be rich. He gave you the knowledge how to be healed. He gave you the knowledge how to, to keep and, and, and remain in safety. Amen? 1 Corinthians 13. 13 one says, Though I speak with the tongues of with men and of angels, and have not love, I'm become as a sounding brass or tinkling cymbal. Verse 2, and though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, you with me? Holly, verse 2. Where it says all knowledge, once again, is gnosis. And though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and I have not love, I am nothing. You with me? Verse 3, and though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burnt, and I have not love, it profit me nothing. Verse 4. Love suffers long. Love is kind. Love envy not. Love vaunteth not itself up. Love is not puffed up. Amen? We already read that. Gnosis puffs up. Hallelujah. So we know what doesn't puff up is agape. Amen? Amen. Are you with me, saints? Hallelujah. Verse, uh, verse 5. Doth not be behave itself unseemly. Seeks not its own. It's not easily provoked. Thinks no evil. Verse 6. Rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in truth. What? Love rejoices in truth. 
Love rejoices in the name Yahweh. Love rejoices in the name Yahshua. Love doesn't see the name Yahweh's judgment. Love doesn't see the name Yahshua's judgment. Are you with me, saints? Verse 7 says, Bear up all things, believe in all things, hope in all things, endure all things. Verse 8, Love never fails, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. Knowledge here against is gnosis. Mm. Knowledge vanishes away, but epigenosis, same word, princess, with EPI on it, but epigenosis is precise knowledge. Epigenosis, whenever you read it in scripture, always denotes the knowledge of Yahweh or the knowledge of Christ. Now, I want y'all with me for a moment, man, because I had to do a great study on this because through all my reading, I don't find anybody who's saying this. Amen? And because I can't find nobody saying this, I have to go all throughout the New Testament and see where the word applies and then begin to apply it. Wherever you see epigenosis, I need y'all with me, epigenosis always talks about how you will overcome the lust of the world through the knowledge of Christ. Uh, you'll overcome sin through the knowledge of Christ. Amen? I thank and praise Yahweh for the law because the law told me the epigenosis of sin. Amen? Uh, epigenosis is Yahweh's knowledge. Amen. So epigenosis is equivalent uh, in the Hebrew to the ark. Are you with me, saints? I need you with me. But the word says, I need y'all with me, verse B, I'm in. It says, love never fails, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. The name Yahweh, Yahshua, is never going to vanish away. You with me? All right, verse 10 says, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part is done away. Epigenosis is when Yahweh is sending forth his perfect knowledge. I mean, his perfect knowledge will work in this world, the next world, and every world to come. When I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. But now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even also as I am known. Verse 13. And now abideth faith, hope, and love. Right there on the board. Just write it big, we're going to erase it. Right? Faith, hope, and love. These three. The greatest is love. Did you write it? I need y'all with me. Come on, Saints, we run out of time. Hallelujah. We know Christ is coming back soon. So he might come back before this. Let me see this. Everyone say faith. Hey. Hope. Oh. Love. 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 The greatest is what? Love. love. Everybody with me? The greatest is love, but I need y'all to listen. I mean, you didn't build your relationship with Christ in love. You didn't build your relationship with Christ in love. Yep. Amen. Because in Christ, the Bible is very explicit. Amen. Without faith, it's impossible to believe it. Before you can love him, you got to believe he exists. Some of you got some of you with Amen. Before you can love him, stop acting like you woke up one day and you were loving him. Right. No. What happened? You was in some trouble. You found out, yo, I'm going to hell. Yo, what's going on? Before you know, you start crying. You're like, what's going on here? Amen? It had nothing to do with love. Come on. Right. Oh, y'all not with me. The greatest is love. The reason why the greatest is love because he loved you while you were messed up. He loved you while you missed it. He loved you when you were born in sin. He loved you before you were born. He loved you. Amen. I got that with you. Amen. But well, we have to understand how the Bible says, huh, you all with me? Amen. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. We got to understand we built our relationship with Christ first through hope. Then we got enough hope to believe in faith. And then through faith, we found God. He loved us. God's not with me. But the relationship with him is backwards with us. First, he loved us. He loved us so much that he caused us to hope in him so that we would have faith in him. I think y'all with me for just a moment. I mean, how can you believe in him that you don't believe in? So stop acting like you woke up loving him. No. You started loving him after he educated you. I mean, he had to educate you. I mean, he had to educate you and tell you, look, you think you're all right, you can I had to bring you to a place where you go. He educated you. And you're like, man, you know, son, you love me more than my mama. You love me more than my daddy. You love me more than anybody. I mean, the Bible says, we love him because he first loved us. When epigenosis is what caused me to love Christ. I mean, y'all not with me. 
I mean, with Christ, you learn to love him. You learn to love him. I mean, you learn, you didn't wake up loving him. I mean, stop acting like you came out the womb and said, hallelujah. I mean, I'm ready to go. I mean, some of the biggest changes in my life came after the biggest mess ups. The biggest mess ups produced the greatest prayers in my life. I had some mess ups that was, oh, you got to be with me. Please, oh, only you can help me. Listen, let me tell you, let me tell you what grace is. You listen, grace is, Holly, me and my friends, Holly, we went, made snowballs with rocks, went to Elwood School and broke the glasses. Grace was they called everyone down to the principal's office. Everybody got suspended except for me. And they brought me down and said, look, we know you were there. We saw you were there. But because we know your sisters, because we know Kim, because we know Allison, and because we know your parents, we gonna let you go. And we know that you didn't tell your parents, so we ain't gonna tell your parents. That's what grace is. Grace is, I'm guilty, but I'm being let go. So last night, I remember, I'll never forget this. I was in my office, I used to have an office called Street at 2 Broad Street. And I was counseling a married couple, Joe and Maxine. And I can't remember how I got on the subject. But I was telling them, you know, when my father dies, I don't think I'm gonna cry. You know, I said, you know, I'm not gonna cry. You know, because me and my father didn't have a relationship like that. And while talking to him, I start crying. Wow. I'm like, yo, what's going on with me? You know, I'm crying. But it seemed to answer my own question. Wow. I started crying by telling him I'm not going to cry. Wow. So Yahweh brought this up to me last night. I want you to listen to me. And Yahweh, I began to see my father in my life without time. And Yahweh, he said something to me. He said, what, do you, what are some of the significant things you remember about your childhood with your father? He said the good thing. I said, I remember Christmas morning, he bought me a Lionel train. I mean, it was maybe six or seven years old. Some of y'all, y'all don't know, Lionel was the train. Yeah. Yeah. Lionel was the train, and it was expensive. Yeah. I mean, Van Burgers in Newark, every Christmas, they on the fourth floor, I believe, they would have this big train set up. Yeah. I mean, and people were coming all over to watch the big train, Lionel train. Yeah. I remember my father set up, and I remember him playing with the train, even to the point, I'm like, Daddy, I want to play. You know? <laughs> Listen. And then Yahweh says, what's the other thing you remember? I said, well, I remember when my father got into CBs. You see, CBs, you know, before cell phones, there were CBs. Yeah. <laughs> Break one for a <laughs> <laughs> And my father, Holly, we had the second most powerful C, C, CB in all of uh, uh, East Orange. I mean, the first one was Ace of Diamonds. I mean, this is the Ace of Diamonds, A.D., I mean, and people had cool names, like this is the grave digger at the cemetery base station. <laughs> <laughs> but y'all began to show me that, and I remember how my father spent time with that 10-year-old boy. Mm. And y'all said, how did you forget that? Mm. How did you forget that in your testimony? Y'all right. began to educate me how I have all these good memories about my father that we block out sometimes right. because of bad things. When Yahweh educates you about somebody loving you, he'll show you how he loves you all throughout your life, and you won't even know it. When Yahweh begins to educate you that he loves you, he begins to show you, I was there. I was there when you were sitting. I was there when you messed up. I was there when you blew it. I was with you every step of the way and waiting for you to get to this point. He educates you how he loves you from day one. And you have nothing else to do but to succumb and say, what great love you have for me. Amen. What great love. And saints, what am I saying? I'm saying how they, that in education there's a deliverance. I mean, the greatest is love. You with me? Y'all not going to like this either. Love is against human nature. 
We gotta be taught that. You know, come on, when you're a kid, I mean, I'll never forget. You know, my father, he's working at t Bell Labs. We would get jobs there making money. I get money, and the, my mother told me I gotta start paying rent. First thing she said, you don't love me. You know, I, I told her, I, I will leave here before I pay you rent. When you get older, like, man, I was insane in the mint rent. That's, I was 18 years old, thinking that you're supposed to feed me, clothe me, and now I get some money, oh, I give you this money, money. I, I need you, I need y'all with me. Come on, come on, come on. It's amazing you hold your parents to a different standard. You know, you, you get old and your parents are like, you gotta start, but what? I ain't paid rent for 18 years. Now I got a job, you a hater. This is my money. And we all say the same thing. I'm leaving. But when you leave, you find out, man, Those spankings was love. Yes. Those corrections was love. But at the time, you didn't think it was love? I uh, mean, when I used to play sick and want to stay home from school, and my mother telling me to go, that was love or telling me to go. Well, like, you don't love me, you don't care, I'm sick, I'm dying. And you tell me, like, you're lying. No, I'm dying. <laughs> and you find out it was love. Second Peter 1, 2, come on. You with me? <laughs> Ooh. Saints, I've been enlightened. There's something great and mighty taking place. But like I said, the body of Christ, we don't like to educate. It says, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through, through what? The epigenosis of Elohim. That doesn't puff up. Through knowledge, you get peace and grace. You trying to tell me the more knowledge I get, the more grace I get, I'm getting more knowledge. Woo! I don't know about you. I blow it every day. Every day I mess up in something. Every day I disappoint me. Every day I'm smart enough to put on a new me. I throw up the old me. I'm like, okay, this is a new day. I'm putting on something new today, baby. Yes. Yes. Amen? Are you with me? Look at verse 3. Amen, Father, you are worthy. You are worthy. Come on, y'all. We're breaking it down. According as his divine power, he has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and yalliness through what? <laughs> through the epigenosis. Through the knowledge of him that have called us to glory. In other words, through knowledge, I give divine power. Amen. Listen to what this knowledge does. <laughs> Whereby are given unto us exceedingly great and precious promises that come through epigenosis. That by these, that by the knowledge and by the promises, that by these you might be partakers of divine nature. I mean, divine knowledge. Brings divine nature. Please write it. Divine knowledge brings divine nature. And it causes you to escape the corruption of the world and its lust. Amen. You with me? Okay. Follow your word. Holly, I'm just going to read a few scriptures of epigenosis. You with me? Precise and correct knowledge. Ephesians 1.17 says that the Elohim of our Adonai Yahshua Christos the Father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the epigenosis and the knowledge of him. In Ephesians 4, 13, it says, till we all come into the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of Elohim. The knowledge, once again, this knowledge brings deliverance. In Philippians 1, 9, it says, and this I pray that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and in all judgment. In Colossians 1, 9, it says, for this cause also, since the day we heard it, we do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will, the epigenosis of his will, amen, and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. In Colossians 1.10 it says that you may walk worthy of Yahweh unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of Elohim. In Colossians 3.10 it says, and having put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge, after the image of him who created you. In 1 Timothy 2, 4 it says, who will have all men be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. In Timothy, 2 Timothy 3, 7 it says, ever learning and never able coming to the epigenosis to the knowledge of the truth.